time come for you to be your own man and take on the world? As a, um, he was calling Elon Musk out as uh, a fraud, and he's like the world's biggest con artist. <laughs> I think it's a little harsh. We talked about this at the beginning of one of our other podcasts, but I mean, really, I don't know. I would, I would support that claim. Really? Yeah. Why? Because yeah. Elon Musk is the worst, and everyone hates him. Really? Why? No. Elon Musk is the worst, and everyone no. <laughs> hates him. <laughs> yeah. Everybody just left the podcast yeah. right there. No, dude. I, I'd say that's a little extreme. I mean, there are some things where you could claim yeah he might be a scam artist but he did some good work with paypal yeah I, oh, yeah he sold who did he sell paypal to didn't he sell it to, i don't know actually i'm not gonna i'm I, not gonna talk about i don't that. even know either um <laughs> I, well, I was just watching eBay, spacex no. video did you guys see their latest spacex video i did not what's no. it about they they live streamed like the first time that they sent uh a, a canister to the space and it came back down and they sent it to space again and the rocket landed. And the videos, have you guys seen the videos of the rockets mm-hmm. landing? It's freaking beautiful. Just watching it go, mm-hmm. and just like landing perfectly every time. And they're setting up stuff to the ISS, and they do that a lot. That's crazy that NASA kind of just like fell out, and now they're expecting it's all private about, companies it's to private sector, man. pick up the slack for them. And it's arguably doing much better. It's crazy how much SpaceX is a far is... Uh, how far they are ahead of everybody else. I was watching a video about like Blue Origin. Mm-hmm. Did yeah, you see that video? Jeff Bezos's company. Is that really who it is? Yeah, really. It's an Amazon company. That's crazy. I didn't know we were having like a a CEO arms race to space right now. Is because Blue Origin, but they're like way far ahead. They're not. They're still not landing their rockets yet. That's mm-hmm. that's still. They're by far ahead of everybody else. Anyways. Enough talk about uh, space. Let's get to augmented reality. Hello and welcome to the Reality Check Podcast, episode 42, right? Yes, 42. 42, 43, wherever we are. Well, we did like 41, but it was only like 20 minutes long because my laptop destroyed itself. Technical difficulties, which hopefully we will avoid for this podcast. Thank you guys for joining us, though. Um, Today we have a lot of exciting news. We're streaming on a Thursday night, which is definitely not a normal night, because we knew that Wednesday night there was going to be some very big news that we would want to cover. We totally knew that it was coming, and yeah. that's why we postponed it. Exactly. We, it was such big news that Paul even flew into town yeah. to be here for this podcast, because that's how big the news was going to be, which we'll get to that news in a little bit. All of you already know what it is. but Christmas? Uh, Christmas. Christmas is coming, Christmas yes. came early. That's the big... Oh, it really did, actually. Um... But I'm Eric, I'm your host for the Reality Check Podcast, and I'm joined by one good friend, one not-so-good friend, well, I guess I'm, I'll, I'll leave it ambiguous, I'm joined by a friend and a not-so-good friend, <laughs> so we, we all can keep... know who it is, <laughs> okay. My Switcher friend and my friend that's literally playing the Nintendo Switch right now, off camera. Not paying attention to us. At all. Dude, he is immersed. In his own world. The Switch is incredible, by the way. I don't know if I said that enough. This is not a brand for the Switch or for Coke. Uh, but go ahead and introduce yourselves, boys. Uh, yeah, I'm Austin. Here again. Glad to be here. Glad to be here in the presence of Paul. <laughs> Jesus. In the presence of Paul. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Paul. <laughs> that was a great intro. I've been on the <laughs> podcast a couple times. A lot of times. I... Not miss a few here and there. Yes, I was going to say I miss a few here and there. Come on, Austin. We're trying to be professional. We've <laughs> got big news to cover today. Oh. Um, and I'm really excited to cover that big news. And, yeah, I think our Magic Leap fan base will be pretty uh, excited about this podcast. Or maybe they'll be a little angry at us by the end of it. I have not checked the Magic Leap Discord or Reddit yet on purpose. Because, well, maybe not on purpose. I'm curious to what they're saying over there. I'm curious if this is living up to their hype and to whatever. So we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Is there any other news we need to cover before we start our Magic Leap goodness? Has um, anything been exciting happening? Bitcoin fell. Bitcoin has fallen because... Hit 20 I, grand, went down to 15 grand, which is still insane, but yeah. still. I guess there's some inside trading going on at Coinbase, so let's hope they get that figured out and Bitcoin can continue on its upward trajectory. Uh, XRP has done well in the last couple of days Hit here. Hit a dollar. So uh, that's good. Um, yeah, in the MR world, it's been pretty quiet. I think Microsoft, they played their hand, and now 
They're just waiting to see how it all unfolds in these coming... Well, this is their last week to really find out how it goes, so... Definitely. And did you read any, any other news that you heard no, of? No, I think it's been a real quiet week. It really has been, which you think it would be more gearing up to Christmas, but I guess it's probably too late for most people to purchase presents and get hyped for stuff right now. It's geared up a little bit. We're, we're, we're slowing down a little bit. I bet beginning of 2018 around award season. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to bring this up to you guys. But oh, we're going to have to do yeah, awards. I wanted to talk about doing awards, but we did not plan it at all. Anyways, howdy, Tuck. Welcome to the... S- Tuck Siver, welcome to the stream. Uh, if any of you guys don't know, we stream the podcast live once a week, depending on the date, but most of the time it's on Tuesday. We stream live. Come join us. It's about 7 o'clock uh, Mountain Time, and if you guys don't catch the live version, you guys can catch it on the pre-recorded version, which comes out every Friday, which we have not been doing very good at getting it out, but we're going to get better, and thank you. Also, you can catch it on SoundCloud at the Hollow Herald. Just search Hollow Herald on SoundCloud. Anyways, let's get into the uh, the big, big news no we're not gonna get we're not gonna get into the big news we're gonna get our news out of the way first because everybody's here for magic leap obviously magic leap madness um wait magic leap Mag- yeah i'm not gonna- here for magic leap what are you here for how lens oh okay okay right here baby yeah anyways <laughs> <laughs> okay so um we've been talking here at the hollow herald and we wanted to do awards for mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, the reality awards. We'll probably call them the reality check awards um, for our podcast. So we wanted to discuss some of our, um, what are they called? Like best picture categories? Categories, yes. Some of the best categories and some of the people that we thought. You guys can go ahead and let us know apps or people that you guys thought in the chat or message them to us or DM us to on Twitter, and we'll just kind of nominate our own people as we go. Uh, we'll probably be, be doing that the first or the second week of 2018. Uh, we'll be announcing the winners and giving out trophies, and they'll be pretty official, hopefully, because nobody else is really giving out mixed reality awards like that. So we'll hopefully be the first. And, I mean, we're, like, the most credible source and – People really want a trophy for us. I mean, you put that on a shelf, and that says a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. From, right. From from, right. from, Hall- from yeah. the Hollow Herald. The Hollow Herald. Rea- we'll make it look reality check award for best this. People people go crazy. It's gonna be awesome. So some of our. <laughs> it's a kind of frog, isn't it? What's well, magically? It's a kind of frog. <laughs> That's funny, Tuck. Anyways, um. So let's think of some categories. Sorry, we, we're a little rushed. We hooked up some new stuff for the podcast that we'll show you guys in a minute, and it kind of stole a lot of our time to prepare. But um, a couple of the categories I was thinking was um, MVP of the year, most valuable mixed reality player. So MV- MVMR. M- MVMRP. Oh, God. Just call it the MVP. We'll, we'll just call it the best <laughs> MR the best. thing of the year. Um, we could do, like, best app or, like, most promising app because I don't think we're in a position to really say, like, Best app, because I think we all know what th- it would be. I think we should do a best corporate app that yeah. came out in 2017 and a best indie app. Yes. I think we should give out one to corporate people. And so that's people with like a big company uh, that one people, f- one for indie developers, which I, I can already guess who we're going to be. Some of the people that are going to be on most indie developers will probably be um, Cybersnake. Mm-hmm. Lucas I really Risotto. liked. What? Lucas Risotto. Lucas Risotto made that. Um, I can't think of any others off the top Sky of my Z. head. Oh, Sky Z's um, Room Scanner, Matrix Inception Room Scanners app. Um, what else is there? I don't know, but some. <laughs> no, she's good. She's good. She's good. We gotta focus. We gotta focus. This is gotta um, be good. In terms of corporate apps, would we include Fragments, or should we say that Fragments, because it was a Microsoft project, should be just like not included in the run? Yeah. I also think it came out in 2016. Oh, true. So yeah. I don't even think it, it was came a launch out. title, wasn't it? Corporate apps, I think, will be. Yeah. Um, wow, we should have been really more prepared for this. Yeah. But the the full version will be crazy. They were just naming off some random apps to kind of jog your guys' memory to give us ideas. Probably nominations will be people like. What's uh, that company? Uh, oh my god. What's that so company I, that makes Sean Ong? Yeah. Sean Ong's not corporate. Oh, what's that? Company? Object theory. Object, Object theory. theory. Uh, um, spatial okay we're not going to say anymore because we're not we don't we don't we're sorry we're not prepared for this um but we have lots of them we have a whole chart that we've been making out and everything for this um we'll probably be our categories will probably be um mvp so that's like a community member person that's contributed the most they could be a developer they could be a community member whatever it is just someone that we've seen that is contributing a lot and there's a lot of people that are running for that one this has been a big year for community development uh and 
Um, best indie app, best corporate app, favorite device, which I think there's only one device that came out this year, so that'll probably have to go to Meta. It'll probably just go to them. I can't think of any other devices well, off the top of my head. Oh, no, there's a couple other. Yeah. Vuzix. Uh, oh, okay, there's quite a few, actually. OTG came out with something, didn't they? Yes, I think mm-hmm. they did, too. So, yeah, okay, there's more devices. There's a lot of devices. Um, so just more categories along those lines, and we'll be heading out awards at the beginning of 2018. Can we include the iPhone in that because of ARKit? coming out with it maybe we could do but do we really want to give the iphone another award how about how about <laughs> let's not do let's maybe we could do something like um our favorite non-headset app mm-hmm. so that's uh, uh like something for ar core or ar kit what are those because i know we have a couple of people like puzzle ar have been making some really cool stuff for that there's some cool measuring apps so i, d- I think it's about a big year for that we could also try some of those Anyways, be looking for that. Uh, we'll also probably have our favorite Hollow Herald community member and be giving out probably maybe not an award, but a giveaway to that person of some sort, someone that we've just noticed has been a really good viewer over the years. Um, people that probably watch the live stream are probably going <coughs> to be in there a little bit more than everybody else. But anyways, I think that gets enough of that out of the way and be looking forward to our awards. Anyways, let's jump into Magic Leap, shall we? Uh, yeah, so Magic Leap, just last night, well, just yesterday, uh, kind of teased their new product coming out and gave us a kind of general release date. So, what do you guys think about that? They even released like some renderings of what the actual device will look like, what what will be included in this development kit, and a rumored price point. Interesting. Uh, let's start from the very beginning. So, I guess we were kind of right with our estimates. I. I can't remember what our estimates were exactly on the podcast. We should probably like do a super cut right here to cut to what we said and see if we were correct. Um, I knew there wouldn't be a device. A lot of people were speculating there was going to be some form of a device or anything, but this isn't even an actual device. These are just 3D renderings of the device. Um, I'm. We'll get we'll get into a lot of the details. Like the next 45 minutes is going to be dedicated to Magic Leap, basically. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff. Um, but first, were you guys expecting the announcement for this week? I was, I mean, based on all the rumors we've heard, the people we've talked to, the things we've read, I was expecting something sometime in December. Um, but what they delivered uh, left me less than impressed. Because uh, it's nothing. It They didn't even give us anything. It was just more like an announcement to another announcement. Exactly. And before we get into this, we're going to preface this by like, we're not Magic Leap haters. We are slightly HoloLens fanboys, but that's just because that's what we've been exposed to the most. When we tried meta, we became meta fanboys. It's basically whatever we can try, we'll probably like it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're not going to... So from all of this doesn't come from a point of hate. Everything we say will come from a point of criticism and like constructive criticism on that point. So all the Magic Leap fanboys and fanners out there, uh, we love you guys. You guys are great. Uh, our, if our opinion is different than yours, please let us know down in the comments or the chat below. Uh, but let's get get into it. You want to go ahead and cut to my uh, camera, Ken? We got this cool new... Uh, oh. oh. It knows I'm screen capping it. No, it's when you free, freak out your mouse like a rave starts. Oh, yeah. Let's go. I don't know if that comes through to the... You guys might have not... That might have not come through to the... Uh, did that come through to you? Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> Headphone warning. Uh, Anyways, probably... so this is Magic Leap's website. One of their biggest things that they did is actually up- updated their website. Um, so you open it up. We'll be doing live reactions uh, to all this stuff. Have, have you guys all seen this already? Mm-hmm. Briefly. Um, so as I go to scroll down. I'm scrolling down now. It comes out, and we're at this. Level. So let's first off, let's kind of go over everything we've seen. Uh, we got some jellyfish. First off, beautiful website. Very oh, yeah. well done. Yeah. Uh, we've got the temperature over here. Uh, we've got some something down here. I don't know what this is, like a little city thing. Uh, we've got vines coming out over here. Well, we've got some Ikea chairs. I've seen those at Ikea. Really? So, yeah. So they are. I wonder if they have a partnership with Ikea or something. I wouldn't be surprised because they Actually, everything in that. here looks like it's from Ikea. <laughs> um, we've got a helmet. Uh, I'm really interested to talk. Let's see what that book is. I can't tell right there. But um, uh, let's see. I'm really interested to talk to Noah and some of the Magic Leapers and see what kind of secrets they've found because... Oh, I bet it's full of Easter eggs. I bet this is... The fact that we just found the rave is pretty important. So, I mean, it's like... (sighs) 
I'm really excited to see what they come with it, but there's going to be so much to go through, and I wish it wasn't so much Easter eggs. I wish it was more like actual hardcore. Anyways, we, the, we, have, we can see they're kind of like bending the wall right here, kind of just emulating that this wall is probably even a render of some sort. Uh, obviously, this whole picture's a render, <laughs> but um, all right, let's keep scrolling down. Welcome to day one. Let's keep scrolling out. Oh, okay, we can see a little bit better now. Looks like we have a desk. This is supposed to be Saturn. It's very interesting. I mean, this is typical. Any startup or anybody would make renders like this for their stuff. All right, now we can actually scroll down. And we get to the headset. <laughs> oh, god! Why'd they pick such a muscly dude for that? I, I mean, because the headset looks like... Maybe because they don't want it to look huge, so they picked a big person. Yeah, yeah. but... <sighs> it looks weird. It looks like bug eyes to me. Well, you have the bug problem eyes. is is that it is a render, and they put it on a picture of a real person. Yeah. If you're going to render it, just put it in a white background or a black background or something and just make it look good. But you had to make it look gimmicky by making a render and then putting it on a picture of a real person. That mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to me. It, <sighs> Let's see if anybody's in chat talking they about really, it. Uh, I think they really dropped the ball on the PR battle with this one in terms of, like, that's the picture everyone has to associate with your product. It looks like some, like, seven-year-old got on Photoshop real quick and was like, oh, I'm going to take this render and put it on this guy. <laughs> That's what this it looks is, like. This is not far off. There was a couple rumored Magic Leap. Uh, can we compare leaks. it to the? Oh yeah, we sorry. do have that picture. Can we compare it, compare it to the patent? Do we have that? Do we? Do yeah, we get that's the on up? Slack. All right, we have the patent up. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the patent. Which one? In the podcast. Just go to podcast. It's somewhere in there. Scroll up. Really far up. Just. Yeah, keep going up. This is all going to be open to yeah. everybody. Switch off this for a second, Kane. Thank you. All right. Sorry, everybody. It's one of the things I posted. So there. That's the patent image. So they didn't give a front view, but they gave the back view, and it looks very similar. Once we get this open for everyone, if it will. It's breaking. Okay. Okay. Got a lot of Chromebooks. Oh, we're running all this off a of Chromebook. Uh, go ahead and cut back to us, Kane. All right. So we have the patent right here. And then we have the actual device. I think there should be a picture there. Okay, right There's there. a picture of a better device. So I'm going to switch between these. So it looks similar. Yeah. Should I bring them side by but, side? Yeah. But if you're just going to... If you're just going to release a render of your product, don't put it on a human being. Just... Yeah. That picture right that we're about to show you right there is perfect. Like, that is a good way to just render out your product and show people what you want it to look like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put it on a person... Yeah. One thing I'm noticing here between the differences between the two, there's a significant amount, which is understandable. Even these renders, I can guarantee, you, will look significantly different than the actual. Oh, yeah. Will look very significantly different oh, yeah. than the actual device. Um, One big thing that I was reading these is. These are only August 30th, though, of this year. This mm -hmm. patent was filed August 30th. Look how much it's changed yeah. in only four months. That's crazy. One thing that I was reading that a lot of people are upset about, well, I don't know if they're upset about, is. It doesn't look like it's a glasses compatible device. Mm. Yeah, I can see That's that a good actually point. because it doesn't have like the visor look that like the Meta or the Hololens mm -hmm. has. It it looks like a pair of glasses that you would put on. Exactly. So I wonder if maybe that is something they have to address in the future with maybe a prescription model that's, or I I read that that's the rumor. Is okay. They're going to be prescription magic leaps, which will probably cost an arm and a leg. Yeah. I can't even imagine because prescriptions already cost so much. Imagine mm -hmm. throwing that kind of level on. So, okay, let's just compare some of the differences. And this was only a few months ago. So look at what they've already changed in like four-ish month, four months and look at what they've come with now. Four-ish months? Now. Four months ago? Now. Yeah. Imagine like – because it's probably going to be Christmas of 2018 by the time they actually release a device. Um, so holy cow. Okay, let's look. So first off, in this patent, they have no cables coming out of the back. Well, I guess they do. Those are two cables coming out. Oh, those right are there. Those are there. So oh, what okay. they've done is they've moved the cable input back and gone for like a more of a headband design. That's so what smart. are those two cables for? Um, the two cables are for battery and external GPU, oh. um, which I'll get into that in a little bit. Let's just talk about design for this point. We've got a lot of I.O. here. I mean, we've got outward sensors, it looks like. So Cameras. I'm going to just last. I'm going to bring this up full screen this now. Um, so it looks like we've got uh, a sensor, camera of some sort, probably another sensor, 
two facing cameras. Uh, maybe this will be a Rebel to record 3D or something. I don't yeah, know. I think There's a lot of RGB cameras mm-hmm. or similar to looking RGB cameras. Interesting. Um, it's very misleading. Like the IO on devices, especially on renders, can be very misleading, especially when I was looking through the meta and I was holding the meta. I felt like there was a lot of different IO than it was actually used like, because sensors and everything can look all the same but do many different things um it looks like we have speakers out here does that look like a speaker to you guys yeah that looks like a speaker that would go directly into your ear not really like directional audio like like you know on the on the hololens it has the speaker that kind of curves right. into your ear this kind of seems just like you put a pair of like on-ear headphones on but it better have spatial sound of some sort interest I, I, it will have to because that's yeah. one of the best features of oh, the yeah. hololens um hey ravi welcome to the stream uh Leon- Leon Roar, Leandro, something. I'm just going to call you Roar. They're a Magic saying. Leap spokesperson sent a statement to AR- ARS Technica to explain the hardware images posted today. The photos are not renderings, and the only retouching that was done was to edit out some sensitive IP. Well, that's not what people wanted to hear. A lot of people look like... They look, that looks... That's a really good photo. Mm-hmm. That's been touched up by Photoshop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, those... I bet those reflections or something... Interesting. Okay. But when when it's on the guy, like, if you go up to the picture of it on the person, that's not on that person. It looks fake. That looks so fake. It looks like magic, guys. It is yeah. magic. It, our device isn't real. It's like, if you just s- compare the girl's glasses to her face down here, yeah. to the guy's glasses up here, you can see... Uh, I'm not a Photoshop expert, so I'm that not That doesn't look uh, real on his... It, it it doesn't look real. Yeah, it doesn't. Maybe the de- pictures of the device might be, but that's definitely not. Like they could have at least released a video of someone holding it and putting it on their face. <laughs> they didn't need to show like what like, was going on. But... Buttons there and see if we get a different view. Okay, here we go. Here's a picture of it closer up on his face. Okay, that's looking real now, but still, it still doesn't look quite real. It's the lighting. I think yeah, that messes li- it up because they're trying to make it look cool. Interesting. All right. This looks like we got some better I.O. I'm curious what this green sensor is, and mm-hmm. there's sensitive IP on there. I'm cu- curious what the sensitive IP they cut out was. Here's the puck. And Oops, here's... Cool. I love, I love how they're cool. not showing the other, the other puck. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, the there's, power puck. There's, yeah. there's two pucks. Or maybe maybe, maybe the puck... No, no a, there's two no, pucks. Yeah, it's two. They only have one cable coming so out of it. So it's not hand gesture. Well, they, they, they said that there is hand gestures... Um, it supports eye and hand gestures. Okay. Eye tracking and hand tracking, specifically. According to said. Magic Leap, I don't know if that is oh, look, super confirmed yeah. yet. Or, or, or what even eye tracking is defined as by them. I'm not sure if it's something like what, uh, what's that called? M- motion Leaper? Uh, ma- motion. Magic Motion. Oh, my God. I think it's it's Motion something. Well, it's the company motion that leap. does eye tracking that you can add to your own computer. It's like a $1,000 bar. Yeah, you can, put it, your, yeah, you can yeah. put it on your phone and stuff. Yeah. I know Lucas Rosota is using it for some of his VR stuff. It looks okay. really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. He got a beta kit. Um, so, all right, let's start back at the beginning. Um, so, uh, I don't know what we were just talking about, but let's go back on the device. So, here's my biggest gripe with the thing. Before we get... Uh, too deep in everything. I'm just going to say my biggest problem with it. Um, peripherals. Uh, let's go ahead and count them down. So we have the headset. We have this huge motion controller. We have one puck, and there is a second puck because there's a cable going off of it. I think someone cut it out on the Hall Developer Slack. Um, I'm not going to... F- yeah, right here. Yeah. So, so we have two pucks. We have the first puck, which I'm going to assume has USB-C, so maybe... Mm, it could be either battery or it could be battery yeah. or it could be USB-C does HDMI so it could be a GPU of some sort too I, I believe people said that that one is the light pack the the light field is what they're calling that part of it the G, the GPU the light field uh-huh. okay. uh, and then the thicker one at the bottom that is the battery pack okay interesting okay so it looks like we have the top one that's rumored to be some form of GPU I don't know whatever they're calling it exactly and then the bottom one is the uh, battery pack so let's go we have four pieces of peripherals to do one thing here that's unbelievable to me even if we look at VR VR uses three peripherals if we don't break down the headsets into two different the 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 handhelds into two different yeah. devices so even though it's not technically tethered it's still gonna be super cumbersome. I think so. My biggest gripe with VR right now is still the fact that there's um, tethered and everything. That's my number one favorite thing about HoloLens, and that was my one problem with Meta. And I realize it makes sense for Meta, but Meta 
only has one tethering point, and that's to your computer. Sure, you can't move around everywhere, but you get all of the power of your computer. So now you're kind of making some weird compromises here, and I realize that there's got to be compromises in everything we do. Um, if you want this certain power, you're going to have to compromise and either take a heavier device or a clip-on, or if you want more battery life, you're going to have to do this. Um, I'm assuming all this is to make the device extremely light, which will enhance wear, because that's the one thing that wears me oh, down yeah. on the HoloLens, is the weight of it. But I think that could easily be fixed by just transitioning the weight to the back of the device. Mm -hmm. if, all, if a lot of the weight, if the adjustment was on the front and all the weight was on the back, it would be much more comfortable than having it all rest right here. So, mm, what are you guys' thoughts? Well, just speaking about the weight, I mean, if this is just going to be released as a developer's edition, you don't need to worry about the weight right now. you got to perfect the technology and the form, like, and the general form factor. That's where I think the HoloLens succeeds, because it puts everything that's in this picture into its own device. Yeah, I think I noticed... With a clicker. Yeah, we... Yeah, we don't know what the clicker does yet. Um, it could be the same thing as what the HoloLens got, and it's just way bigger than the one on the HoloLens. Um, but if we're just looking at it as it is, it only adds a couple features on top of what the HoloLens is and takes away a couple things. I don't see this changing the game as I said it would right now. It only added like eye tracking and I, one of my that's what they too. claim it added, yeah. There's a lot of people from Magic Leap were, uh, were saying there's going to be a huge FOV change. And I don't see a very big FOV. Instead of having a bigger FOV, they just blocked off your peripherals. That's fine. They just blocked off your peripherals, which is like... It, it, better or worse, do you, would you guys rather have your peripherals and be able to see or just have them blocked off and feel like you have a bigger FOV because it's blocked off? If I'm being like immersed in a situation, which is what Magic Leap claims to be able to do, um, I'd rather I'm blocked off, especially since no one's at the, at the level where it's the FOV doesn't matter. Except you know? for meta, but that's yeah, a different in, ball game. In that case, like if I want to be entertained or whatever, but like Holland's for utilitarian purpose, like I kind of want to be aware of my surroundings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but still use the immersive experience. Compromise. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's got to be compromises for everything. And that's one of the things they're doing. It looks like they have leather headbands, which look really nice. Um, I'll give it to that. Yeah. It looks oh, yeah. very, very nice. Um, uh, I'm uh, USB-C, that's nice to see that. Uh, I'm super curious. They don't see, like, one thing I don't like is these cables come down, and then they're like, this just shows up over here. We don't know how long that is. We don't know everything that goes along and, with it. And then you're going to run into the issue of if you're, like, a shorter person, you're either going to have a cable hanging to you, or like, off of you, or you're going to have to clip it to yourself somewhere, which makes it a more uncomfortable device. The the This will be most comfortable on people who are tall who can extend the cables out where they won't need to clip them to anything. That's a good point. Also, uh, everything is going wireless. Headphones are wireless. Headphones don't have headphone jacks. And, um, pe people are done with wires. Even Austin was just talking. He just bought a pair of Bluetooth headphones, and he's saying how nice they were, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Because They're, why? Because I keep ripping the wires out at work, and it, it's super frustrating. Exactly. Now it doesn't happen. <laughs> because you have wireless headphones. Yep. I just see that as coming around here. I don't see, like, it's not... It just feels like a step back, in my opinion. It doesn't. It's not the biggest detriment. Like if Hololens came out with the pucks, I don't think it'd be the end of the world. Also, I don't think it would affect my usage with the Hololens and such very much. But at the end of the day, I guess it's just not what we expected. I think, and I think we have like the right to be super <laughs> scrutiny disappointed. and disappointed because of all the hype. Like they kind of ruined the hype that they've built. Like. I don't know. We all knew it was going to happen, though, sadly. Yeah. That's the thing. Is was like, I felt like there was a point, I said it in a few podcasts ago, that it was a point where it was like, it's too much now. You know, having a, having a, having that level of hype became too much and it was a pest onto, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, users and to the public. So, uh, I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, I completely agree. I, th I feel like right now, if anyone's list, everyone listening up to this point probably thinks, oh, these guys are just this, they're going to spend all podcasts just trashing on this device. Well, I think we're kind of entitled to that because we were expecting something a little bit more than this. I mean, like, HoloLens gave us an on stage demo when they first were like, hey, here's the HoloLens. Where is our on stage demo here? Like, where, when are you going to show us this device in an uncontrolled environment? That's what. I'll be excited about. Right now, I think it still garners the same 
attention we've given to it in the past where it's just like, oh, yeah, they say they have something. Like, anyone can do that. I want to see how it works, you know. I mean, a Chinese company did it with the HoloLens. They're like, here's a HoloLens that we're building. All they did was they just, like, probably built something on a 3D printer and were like, yeah, this is the thing we're building. Give us money. That's... That's it, basically this falls into the same category as that right now. It's it's just nothing. It's nothingness right now. It's still vaporware. People yeah. are calling it six billion dollar vaporware, which I feel is a little harsh, like a very harsh, because it's been like years of vaporware, but at the same point, it doesn't. Also, this picture of this puck looks different than the picture of this puck down here. This one doesn't have this blue thing over it. That's because it's not powered on. That's a that that's like a on status symbol. Look, it's moving right now. I yeah. think they just programmed that on for cool looks, for cool effects. I, I think I it's going to be real. Okay. I think it's a light display saying, like, either battery life or just confirmation that the device is on. Yeah, man. I don't know. Let's I'm going to give them the benefit about... of the doubt there that they didn't just do that to make it look cool. <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit about marketing for a second and how they've been handling the marketing. Uh, it's, it's intriguing to me how much clout they also were just able to pull and just being like, Boom. And I mean, it's on like CNN, it's on Wired, it's on Verge, it's on all of these places that you would not necessarily, I mean, like front page, not just like an article tucked away. It's been big news. I don't think anybody really cares outside of the VR community, VR, AR community. But uh, I don't know. It's been interesting to see how much they have pulled. Do you think it's a good idea for them to be going this hype right now, this this much marketing? Or do you think they should have kind of like kept it to just techies? This should have been a just techie announcement. I mean... They just didn't give us enough for, and I don't see how you could write a huge news article about this. There's not a lot going on here. That creator portal will be interesting to see. But, um, yeah, there's just not, I don't think there's enough that they released to really write any good articles about or sell anyone about. Yeah, when, uh, Every article's the same. When uh, Arjun posted the article, he, the first time I heard about it, I quickly went and read it, and I was like, well, that was nothing. <laughs> like, it was disappointing to get to have like breaking news like that and just be let down it, it was like their article that they posted it was like a year ago at this point now the one update they posted on their websites because they used to post a lot of updates let's go to their stories tab can you want to cut back to my computer december 20th i am so excited to share with you the first well that's already been seen a lot new york city how it all begun october 4th no it was like this january or yeah it was this creativity and imagination everybody was really hype all about this that they were posting but it still wasn't anything really let's see what they're saying and then yeah look they haven't posted news since 2014 that's worse than our upload schedule <laughs> <laughs> yeah schedule. download our fact sheet should i see what their fact sheet is oh that's just for investors oh uh, well that's no fun potential investors there's nothing real on there that they're gonna be like wait let's look at all these pictures of people Oh, this is their... Where were they? Where'd they go? It went, oh, media. It went back to news. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, these are just a lot of the pictures that we just saw. Uh, I'm just disappointed in this, in the fact that they could have at least given us a demo, not just pictures. That would, that would have been nice. Um, or, like, some form of specs. I mean, you don't need to be that secretive anymore if... If you're going to put such a huge media push on things, yeah. at least give people something concrete. I mean, everyone's going to look at this and be like, oh, like it's not a pretty looking headset. It doesn't look good at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the only, the puck looks good, but the puck we've already determined is going to be a detriment. Mm -hmm. um, the little like clicker, that looks good as well. But the headset itself is not a beautiful device. It's not something that I would be caught wearing out in public right now. Reminds me of Snapchat spectacles. Mm -hmm. Which were... Which were a, a, total, a total failure. Yeah. It was called one of the biggest failures of 2017. Was the... Uh, was Snapchat spectacles. <laughs> did, you, did you not buy a pair? No. Wait, oh. you guys didn't buy them? I thought we all bought them. You're the only one that didn't. <sighs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Just kidding. They're expensive. So. All right. Um... Let's go ahead and go over some of the quotes that we have. Um, the product is continually advancing and may be different at time of shipment. That is a very key quote to every picture and every little thing that they throw out there, which is kind of just like a, 
eh, this is what it is. We had to put something out. This is what it is. Um, the light pack can clip to a belt or shoulder pad, and Obovitz says that it's a similar in power to a MacBook Pro or an Alienware gaming PC with a dedicated graphics card. All right, let's just do a little comparison right now. What's the, what's the smallest, most powerful piece of computer you can buy right now? Like GPU-wise? Yes, smallest. Because an Alienware, let's look at small and Alienware laptop. Let's look at Alienware's smallest laptop. It's probably like the X17. Oh, the no, Alienware 13. 13. What the heck? <laughs> and that's... That's huge. That's pretty powerful, I'm sure. Well, the... I, I don't know how they're condensing an Alienware PC down to a puck. Am I being a hater, guys? Am I am I am I criticizing too much? I think that is not something we need to key on, because yeah, it could have the power of it, but just because you have the power of it, that doesn't mean a lot to me yet. What's those little Chrome box? Oh, they're called Chrome boxes. That's what they are. Um, I feel like a Chrome box. That's like the same size as a Chrome box. Or like a another one that would be good, like the Apple Mini when it was actually like updated and relevant in the world oh yeah 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 so that that's not the same size as that's the glasses yeah. oh, okay let's go back to quotes sorry we're doing a lot of this on the fly everybody so hopefully you guys are not just listening hopefully you guys are our podcast how do you feel about vive focus um in are you going to buy the magic leap one? Oh, let's talk about price point for a minute um welcome to the stream mesbro we'll get to your questions in a minute so there's a rumored price point out there of about 1500 to 2000 dollars for mm -hmm. this device which Roni says is he, his claim is it's competitive with your like an alienware gaming pc so probably top of the line we're looking at about 2 grand there okay um so that's not like a terrible pr price point but i don't see how you beat the hollands at that price point no and i think a lot of the criticism too is like by this time this comes out hollands 2 is already going to be out mm -hmm. which as a lot of rumors about what's going on with HoloLens 2. Dude, Some so people excited. think there's going to be a puck on the HoloLens 2 as well, like a GPU puck. Really? Again, yeah, but they'll keep the battery in the headset still. I think like, the battery is the heaviest part. I would rather have an yeah. external battery than a puck. I'm okay. I'm more okay with an external battery um, than a puck. I, I, I think the GPU can fit on there. It, they were thinking like a, a new like Surface phone would come out. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the peripheral for the Hololens feature. Oh, that'd be cool. And if and if that Hololens could run like this Hololens, but then you add the puck for more power, that would be a good idea. Kind of like you know how Razer has that uh, GPU dock where that's you can what I like. that's just what plug I and play. That's yeah. what makes sense to me. If the magic if Magic Leap's going that route, which I doubt they are, or if Hololens goes that route, I like that. I, I like to be able to have the power that the Hololens has right now, but if I want more power, I can plug in to whatever, a puck, a computer, or whatever I need to do. That's one of the things I like about the Switch. The Switch is an all-in-one device that plays really well, but I'm sure in future updates they're going to have it when you plug it to the dock, it's going to be like Xbox One capability powers. That makes so much more sense to me than anything that I see going on right here. Um, I don't see any adjustable way to adjust the headband either. We're going to be doing a whole analysis video of this. It's going to be really cut, clean, and well done. So this is kind of like our precursor to that. So go ahead and share your guys' thoughts in, in the comments and in the live chat. And let us know what you guys think so we can add it to the video if you guys have any informative information. Um, experiment with combinations of creatures and objects to discover unexpected mashups. Like painting with turtles or rays of light. Imagine produce and play whenever wherever and however it's a sandbox without boundaries or real sand it all seems like carpet jargon to me so uh i read a tweet from lucas risotto and he pointed out that when magic leap first started with their like if you go back up to that render uh they were super focused on like photorealistic renders but now this is like super like basic polygon mm. renders which is an interesting shift with the whale. I guess we mm -hmm. didn't even think about that. The shift yeah. from the whale. The whale. I, yeah. I'm going to go back to... Let's go ahead and open up a Wayback Machine and compare their old site to this one. That Their old way, their site sat like that for Ever. how many years? Two, three years at that point? Here you go. If you guys don't know the Wayback Machine, it's awesome. Uh, let's hope they allow it. Some websites don't allow crawlers. 
So one thing that's interesting to me that when I've seen this is, yeah, they say that the device can change a lot from what, from now until it ships. But if they just if they reached out to these media outlets and said, oh, those are pictures of the actual device, that means it's not going to change materially from what it is unless they want to spend a ton creating new manufacturing processes. And so remember, remember this is basically not. what we have right now, mm-hmm. this device that's not pleasant <gasps> to look at. He was a frog. I just went back to their website in May of 2010, and this is what it looks like. Visit us at South by Southwest 2010. Oh, my gosh. Who, who was it that was just joking about it being a frog? It, it was Tuck Silver. Tuck. Tuck. Tuck was joking about it being a frog. <gasps> Holy cow, look at that. The first time I saw the photos, I was disappointed. We were, too. Um, Mesbro says, are you going to buy – or Leandro says, are you going to buy a Magic Leap one? With that said, yes, we're going to buy one. Um, I hope we can get one. I've been on the waiting list for – God knows how long to to see what they have. They're going to see our names. They're going to see the Hollow Herald. And they're going to be like, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. The main difference in the display tech with device shows more realistic graphics. Are you going to buy Magic Leap 1? How do you feel about Vive Focus? We'll go ahead and look at Vive Focus at the end. Um, Guys, this isn't an LCD bouncing off a mirror. This is a direct light shot directly into your eyes. You know how your eyes work. Even if the device is ugly as hell, that is incredible. Uh, that's there's rumors about that because there's rumors about how that doesn't even work in the laws of physics, just like by beaming light into your eyes. What I think you're thinking of is their new light field display that they've been announcing with like um, with active depth of field, so your eyes can help focus on things easier that are closer. Remember that, that it was like it was a really big deal a year a year ago. Who who ODG or somebody does yeah. it? I can't remember. Oh who no, it, uh, it was a. Uh... Just a small company. Yeah. Um, Avagon, Avigent. Oh, oh yeah, Av- Avagon. Avagon did it. Yeah. Or Avigent. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. So the rumors about that actually like being a projector into your eyes. From what I understand, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I think I read a post about how that like defies the laws of physics. Like light doesn't actually work that way. You can't just beam it into someone's eyes and to make them see objects. objects. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't make any sense at all. It, you would need that. Well, that's why there's lenses in the first place. Why, like why would they have the lenses pictures. if they were just going to beam light into your eyes? Why not just have something like the Google Glass? This looks exactly how the HoloLens looks. Yeah. And you, can, you know how yeah. – you, you see this part right here, how it, it bumps out like this? I'm going to guarantee that's because there's light beams right there that beam it into multiple layers of glasses – layers of glass and they just added more layers to give the better depth of field yes and that's how the, the light goes in there and it reflects through those depths of field and that's how you can see um same th- th- it works the same on the hololens uh, i'm sure it's going to be an updated version those do look bigger than what are on the hololens by a, by a quite a bit oh yeah the hololens are actually quite s- small <laughs> um they're so close to your eye so that bigger is significant like even that, if that's going to be the FOV being fixed. Yeah, even if it's just like millimeters, since it's so close to your eye, that makes a very big difference. Um, they're not curved, which I heard some rumors that they were going to be curved, but um, that's just interesting. By, just by looking at the picture, it looks pretty light though, and looks it does a lot look light. easier to put on than the <laughs> Hollands. Yeah, it, I think it's going to be a much not with all the cables though. Because well, yeah, imagine handing excluding it to somebody the cables. else. Okay, excluding the cables. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. I think it does. The padding looks a lot, lot nicer than a Holland's. Mm-hmm. The nose piece looks like it's probably going to be nicer. It's obviously going to fit nicer because mm-hmm. it doesn't have the weight on your nose. Um, it looks like it's going to be sitting on your nose like a pair of glasses because the Holland's actually has a band. I can pop it out right here for you guys um, and show you just like this. The headband. This is the actual part. Like people that have never tried on a Holland's thinks. Oh, my bad. Um, thinks that this part goes around on your head. But it's actually just this part, um, which I don't see any of that on here. Which which means it's going to rest on your eyes. Yeah. But it's so light. It's going to be so light compared to the Hollands. I don't think that's a big deal. And then when you bring up the fact about looks, I think it's kind of almost a mute point considering the fact of how visual like human beings are. I mean, I'll, I'll use the examples of a car. If you had a car that had the performance of like a Bugatti Veyron, but it was ugly as hell. No one's going to buy the car, even if it's the most incredible car in the world. We buy things because they look nice. Mm-hmm. And even if it works incredible and has incredible technology, what's stopping someone from like someone like Microsoft or Meta coming in and saying, yeah, we built the same thing, but it looks beautiful like the rest of our device lineup. Like I, Apple does. Basically, yeah. just becoming and being Apple. Build something yeah. with similar specs, get a cult following, which I think Magic Leap is. That's mm-hmm. what a lot of the comments I read was Magic Leap's basically just the Apple of the AR world at this point, where it's like, they'll have a cult following. Sure, it's not the best device. It's not the best. As far as like going off and trading devices and having somebody else wear them, mm-hmm. 
I think this is... I love just being able to pop off the HoloLens and say, hey, Austin, check this out. Mm -hmm. But if it's tethered to me and I have to set the device down, unclip stuff, clip it on him, put the headset on him, and then hand him the thing, ugh, I'm so not happy that there's so much tethering. I hate peripherals on everything. I hate cables. This should be like the leap. This is the future. There should be no cables. That there was no leap for this magic. I like their original site better, I think. <laughs> is that real? This is yeah, really their website that, from 2010. May 15, 2010. This was their original website. It's a great color scheme they got going yeah, on dude, there. That, that Red, feels yellow, like... and blue. This just shows you what anybody's capable of. I mean, yeah. this looks like crappier than sites we've started mm -hmm. by a lot. No offense to them. Um, this looks like you could mock this thing up in 30 seconds. Like Photoshop job. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. But look what they've become. They're a multi-billion yeah. dollar industry. They have a dope website now. Billions of dollars in assets worth up to six to eight billion dollars. Can we make that a red bubble sticker? This. That'd be hilarious. Magic Leap Studios. Oh my gosh. We, we get sued so fast. <laughs> Magic Leap's not the kind of company to mess around, I don't think. <laughs> At all. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and check out their website. Let's watch the progression of their website. You guys can do this live with us. Should we go to 2011 and see how it changed? Yeah. All right, we're moving up. 2012, it didn't have any changes. This is when crawlers hit it, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's a change. This is 2010, 2011. Okay. They got their logo at this point. looks a lot different now. Um, our they blue had a portal lot and beta. more information. Yeah, our blue site is now... Let's go to ourblue.com. Might want to check the comments, too. Is there comments? Mm-hmm. Oh, the hour blue. Oh, well, I wonder what the hour blue is. It links to their website now. We're, we're Easter egg hunting live with you guys. Um, why is the Holland so expensive on Amazon? It's like $1,000. Those are scams. Yeah, that's a scam. It's You actually sign a deal. Well, you used to have to sign a deal that you couldn't resell the Holland, uh, especially outside of the country. It's probably lifted now. But, um, yeah, it's three grand. Unless it's broken, even if it's broken, it's probably going to be more than a grand. Um, because that is how your eyes work. You don't see objects in the real world. You see the light that is reflected off those items. I do admit that sounds incredible. However, it is physically possible. You're looking at it in different ways, though. That's you're looking at like refraction and reflection in two different ways. Because like you're you're saying that something. Ab it's like what you're saying is like if you looked at a projector and beamed that projector into your eye, you would see you objects. would see the object. No, no, no. How it works is it beams and it reflects off and the image is flipped back to you. Um, so maybe? I don't think... I, from what I understand, that doesn't work in the laws of physics yet, at least with our current technology. Anyways, um, kind of steampunk looking or old age motorcycle goggles. Honestly, I kind of like the way it looks. Same. Lightfield technology is real. Avagon have videos on YouTube. Yes. Lightfield. The Lightfield's different, though. <laughs> Read it. We're not experts, so I don't want to say that we're 100% correct, but the way I understand how Lightfield works is that it uses active depth of field through um, light being beamed into your eyes, but that's not how it works. It works through lenses coming at your thing. I don't understand how it works. Go on the Hollow Developer Slack and ask them. They're way more smart than I'll ever be, uh, and they can explain it better. But um, it looks like it, the way at least it looks to me, it looks exactly how the HoloLens works with active light field display, which is what they rumor to have in the HoloLens 2 as well. Anyways, moving on. Yeah, the the, the, the way the look isn't too bad, but... Um, it's a personal preference. It's a personal preference, and which it is with everything. Some people mm -hmm. like the meta. I love the way the meta looks personally. I like it better than how the HoloLens looks, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... I don't like Snapchat spectacles. Some people love the Snapchat spectacles. It's all just preference, which is fine. Okay, let's see what this says. Uh, social cinematic experience through collective imagination. Magic Leap is a digital and media technology company that develops and delivers proprietary content through its platform and vision of social cinematic experience and collective imagination. Both trademarked words. The company company's first offering, The Hour Blue, is a co-development with collaborator Weta Workshop. So I guess they've been working with Weta Workshop for like years and years and years. The Hour Blue site is now in beta. Experience contribute, be involved. Hmm. Download. Let's see if the download link's still there. I highly doubt it's still active. Oh, they have a PDF. 
Did Wayback Machine download it? Oh, cool. Oh, this looks like Magic Leap something. Doesn't this look like Magic That's Leap? That's awesome. That's sweet. That would be a cool, like, poster. The Hour Blue. Let's the rotate app to your it. Phone or tablet. Can I rotate Start the it? app, aim your phone. Sorry. It's basically like that app, is that, that cube? Remember that uh -huh. AR the cube The Future got? Mythopia. The hour blue dot com. Oh, this is kind of cool, actually. That looks this looks cool. pretty sick. That'd be a really cool poster. All right, let's rotate it all the way around. All right, instructions. Go to magicleap.com slash the hour blue. All right, now I want to go. <laughs> you think they shut it off? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just hour blue. It's not the hour blue. Oh, uh, really? Oh, yeah. Our blue. No, it still exists. Still Unless it's re. Yeah. Yep. Ah, oh, dang. Mm. It's their 404 page. Oh, I thought you could click and turn off light. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're getting distracted. Hopefully, you guys are watching. This is a very visual podcast. Um, download the app on your phone or tablet. Start the app. Aim your phone at the tablet's camera at this flyer. And then I I'm guess see, I wonder what happened. That sounds cool. Available on the App Store. Well, this is 2011 though. This was kind of yeah. before anybody was doing augmented reality with QR codes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, let's move back to their other website. I think you can move forward via that. I probably should have done that, but I want to jump farther than that. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. So the SDK is, they're developing their own SDK, but people are rumoring that it's going to be off of... Uh, Unity, but not confirmed. Not confirmed. I think it would be a shame if they didn't go off of Unity, because everything yeah. else is being Unity-based right now. So unless they get and a sick deal with someone else. And if but if, all, if they're rumored as the Apple of AR and MR, then... Closed end to end kind of thing. Yeah. They're gonna make their own, and no one's gonna use it. Have it run off Java or something. No, like. I'm sure it's gonna be open. I don't know. Unconfirmed. They should make it open because that's what's gonna like lead to better MR apps coming out. Is if people can port them over from mm -hmm. anything or it's work on really. the same project on all devices. Select a random date here. We're going up into 2014. The site did something cool, I'm sure, but it's not loading. Let's see if this one loads. Ah, oh, that's cool that it archived that PDF. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sean Ong posted in the Hollow Developers Slack that says, do you guys think that Microsoft developers are A, sweating themselves right now, or B, laughing? Did you guys see the response? Yeah, I, I did. Austin, did you? What do you guys think? What's your A or B? I think they're, they're laughing. You think they're laughing? They're definitely laughing. I think so, too. I think everyone's kind of laughing right now, which might be motivation for them to be great. Which I hope. I'd love some good competition. I bet Tanner likes MR this. Market. Tanner, come here. He, Tan, Tanner's not really into MR or anything. He's tried the HoloLens. He's tried VR and stuff. So he's kind of just into tech a little bit. Give us a, your live preview of what you think this device is. Come here. Come talk right into the okay. mic. What are your Wait, first what thoughts? What are your first thoughts? Without knowing anything, just looks. Um, I think you'd look like something out of a sci-fi film but you'd look like the nerd that no one likes okay out of oh, a sci-fi okay. film <laughs> okay okay um what do you think of the peripheral let's see you want to see on someone's head sure uh there first thoughts mm, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> is this something you would wear um no i think the hollow ones you think the Hollands is better? Okay, and he's not a fanboy at all. Like this is like he's, he doesn't he's tried. I, I just he outside input. All right, what do you think about having to hook stuff onto your pockets? That's annoying. That's annoying. You don't want that. What do you? I mean, it's it's better than hooking it into a, a computer or a wall, but. So it's a step up from like VR, yeah. but still yeah. not quite here. Yeah. What are your least favorite things about the Hollands? Um, I guess it's kind of bulky, and sometimes it wobbles a little more okay um fov do you do you care about the fov does it bother you that much the, tell me what fov is it's the field of view like, like you know how when you kind of look the uh, it is a little the limited box? okay um like it doesn't have the peripheral vision mm -hmm. um what about this controller 
Do you like controllers or do you like hand gestures? Mm, I think if hand gestures were more defined, it'd be cool. It would be better, but um, I think a controller is more uh, accurate, I guess. It, it you, It's easier to get what you want. It gives you more power? Yeah. Okay. Okay, interesting. What they, what they need is, like, gloves for doing oh, gestures that, or something. There's companies working on that. There's companies working on that. Okay, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Tanner. <gasps> <laughs> All right, that's your live uh, take of on Magic Leap from someone that doesn't give a crap about any of it. So take that for what it is. Don't give a crap. Dude. All right, and Magic Leap had their site, though, what it was Dude. right here. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> Roni said thank you to Noah. Oh, and is Noah here? Twitter. No. Uh, it's probably one of the... Why has this been their take on everything? It's so fluffy. So fluffy and beautiful. Because fluff wins. It's just their style, dude. That's fine. That's fine. So, for anybody out there that has read Ready Player One, after this announcement, please tell me that Roni Abovitz is not the guy that created the uh, the MMO game in Ready Player One. Anybody that's read it, I think he is like the embodiment of the guy that wrote the game. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. All are right. you guys excited for that movie? You're excited for the movie? No, are you? No. Hell no. Okay. I think it's gonna be terrible. I, th- I, I was just wondering because like, I saw the portrayed. I saw the preview and it looked like it looked all right. It looked like your classic like sci-fi movie that yeah. is a port of some book that everyone loves. It could be cool. I think it could be cool. I think it's gonna just be like a cash grab, like every book movie. You yeah. know, I don't think it's gonna go well. All right, let's go over some uh, some comments and then we'll get out of your guys' hair and we'll end this podcast that has been. Wait, Magic Leap Drama. We didn't hit Magic Leap Drama section. Oh, really? Oh, this whole I thought this thing. entire thing was kind of <laughs> Magic Leap Drama, especially the fact that I think, and I feel bad, we did spend a lot of time on this podcast just, like, kind of shitting on the Magic Leap again, as we usually do, but they didn't give us anything to praise them for. And I don't think we were really shitting. We were just talking about points, constructive criticism. I don't think we're hating. We're still going to buy one. We're still excited to see yeah. what they do. Oh, we're definitely buying one. Oh, yeah. If, especially if it's a $1,500 $1, price point, uh, we might get two. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see. So um, let's go through some comments real quick. Everybody out there, leave your guys the last comments, questions about HoloLens or anything. Um, that's what we know most about. Um, what, uh, kind of steampunk looking. Light field technology is real. What about Ronnie saying thank you to Noah? That's cool. If Noah, if Ronnie actually said thank you to Noah, that's awesome. No, Roni, Roni, sorry, Roni Abovitz is uh, like Noah's idol, so that'd be awesome to get a tweet from your idol. It'd be like if Alex Kidman said anything to us, which he won't. Have you heard about the <laughs> Voids Secrets of the Empire Star Wars VR? Oh yeah, did did you guys see that? How like Star Wars releasing its own like AR VR experience solely. But that's on that Void thing down. It's, that's a uh, oh is MR, it? Yeah, that's the Void. Oh, like, that's remember like remember that company. Thing. Oh, really? Oh, that'd be cool. We actually live really so it's close like with to where Ghostbusters, the one. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. I try that. That sounds awesome. We actually live pretty close to where they make the void, so we should get in contact with them and see what they're doing. Uh, Go to a review of it. These these AR experiences are weird. We'll talk about them next week. We'll get into the uh, Star Wars AR VR experience, not the void one, but the one that they created and set it out by Disney. Also, Disney just bought something really important, didn't they? Yeah, Fox. Century 21 Studios. That's interesting. We'll get more into that next week. Basically uh, everything besides Fox News. Yeah. Yeah. Disney owns everything. I won't be surprised if Well, Disney they they wouldn't be like allowed to Leap. own Fox News because I think they own CNN or something like that. So it'd be, uh, interest, yeah. no, it's not conflict of interest. It's just uh, antitrust law. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I w- you, honestly, I see Disney being a company that would buy something like Magic Leap. Anyways, we'll get into that all next week. Thank you guys for joining us. Any closing words, boys? No, it's been a good episode. I'm excited to see what Magic Leap reveals further in the future. I'm sure this is not the end. Um, they say it's day one. So, yeah, hope for the best. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Magic Leap comes out with. I just want to see it work. I don't want to see – I'm done with the fluff. I've had enough of the fluff. Rave. Sorry, I'll end the podcast like that. We're probably getting a copyright strike. Yeah. No, there's no God, stop copyright. already. Stop! Stop! Jeez. Okay, sorry, guys. I just want to see the Magic Leap work. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, whatever it is, I want to see it work. Because, Uh, yeah, I'm done with the fluff that Magic Leap has given us year after year after year. Just give me something concrete to look at 
and then I'll stop criticizing it. Give it to tech people. That's all I care about. Stop giving it to people like who's the basketball rock? NBA black basketball players. NBA Dude, basketball players. We were supposed to talk about the vibe focus. Rock and roll. Okay, we'll do that really quickly and then we're out of here. Uh, what's that rock and roll that everybody loves? The Rolling Stones magazine. They were like the people that break the news. Was the Rolling Stones of all people. They got like an exclusive interview too. What? Magic Leap's weird. Anyways, I I think Magic Leap should go back to its uh its its roots, back to the green flo- frog and the rainbow text. I think that was awesome. I actually prefer that. Uh, we're looking up at the Vive Focus right now. I pro- we probably know what it is, just not the name. It's coming off the type. Is is it going to be? A I bet it's going to be Oculus. The, Oculus. the Oculus Go. That's I, I exactly what it looks be. like right now. Oculus Go competitor. Pre-order now and get four v- free VR titles. <gasps> four grand. Although that, that, that's oh, yen. It's yen. Okay. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> that looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. What the? What are they doing? They regressed. They, they made it bigger. You, you don't like that? That's a phone. There's probably that's an all in, all in one device, man. It's yeah. probably not into but, a computer. But the, so the, this controller looks so the, much uh, like the, the Oculus Go controller. looks so much better. The Oculus Go looks no different than the Oculus Rift. How could how could they? Paul's triggered. <laughs> bye bye. Just oh by the looks God. of it. Let's get some specs down here first, Paul, before you start. Display is a 3K AMOLED resolution, 2880 by 1600. That's pretty darn good. Inside and out, six degree of freedom, nine axis proximity center sensor, 110 degrees of FOV. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. That's going to be cool. Micro SD slot and up to two terabyte Ooh. micro X SD external memory. That's Ooh. cool. Two terabyte that's, that, micro SD. Yeah, that's that's crazy. The amount of games you could hold on. That's, that's insane. insane. Yeah. Uh, USB Type C. Thank God. Built-in microphones, built-in speakers, 3.5 millimeters. Sounds like a jet, well-rounded device. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi built-in rechargeable yeah. battery, fa- fast charging up to three hours of active use over one week of Whoa. standby time, nine-axis sensors. Oh, these are the controllers. Nine-axis sensors, touchpad, app button, two trip. Why are they using batteries? <laughs> Gosh. Okay, I was on board until they said batteries in the controllers. That's my biggest complaint. Anyways, who, who asked about the... Uh, who asked? Uh, Mesbro Gamer. M- Mesbro Gamer. Uh, it looks awesome. I- I'm down. What, the specs what? are awesome. It doesn't look awesome, but the specs are awesome. Now let's get. And it's an awesome idea. Yen to USD. I don't know why it's giving me Japanese stuff. Sorry. Four four thousand. Forty three. My Chromebook's slow. Sorry, everybody. We could just ask Google. Yeah, that would have been bad. Oh, she's right there. Once you start her, she oh. never turns off. Uh, four zero zero zero. What is it really gonna cost? Thirty five dollars. Because I'll buy it if it's thirty five dollars. Hey, there's no. <laughs> Maybe that's just pre order price. Maybe it just costs. No way. No. What? Is that yen? Are we sure that's yen? I believe it's yen. Try uh, what's the Chinese dollar called? Uh, uh, the <laughs> holy crap! That's so. Uh, we should know this. Here, just go back and we'll look at the symbols. Go back. No, to the I want <laughs> USD price. Oh. Jeez. What is the what is the Chinese dollar called? I should know that off the top of my head. That's Chinese yeah, or Chinese yuan. Oh. Yuan. Yeah. Yuan. U- yuan. Uh, thanks to Caden. <laughs> thanks, <for> Caden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do. You Yemeni Rai Chinese. You won. Where? I don't see it. All right, here we go. Okay. okay. Six hundred eight dollars. That makes way more sense. Oh, uh, the wow. The Oculus goes way Yen cheaper. is that low? I didn't know Yen was that bad. Anyways, um, six. How much was Oculus Go? Three hundred. Three hundred. That's good. They're like half the price. I don't know. That looks impressive. If they can pull that off. I'm on board. I'll spend six hundred dollars on a device like that. You know what? If it's a standalone VR device, VR esque device that's as good as uh, Acer or any of the competitors now, I, I spend a grand. You're, I'm I'm way up there with the money. Yeah, I, I like the idea that they do take away the literally all of the 
every single one of the cords that would be involved. Like, you don't even have to have headphone cords anymore. I think that is a major step forward. They just could have made it look just a little prettier. I think it looks gorgeous, dude. You got to give them some credit, man. That thing looks like it's out of the future. Vroom. Is Vive a Chinese company? I didn't think Vive was Chinese. HTC is. Okay, I guess that makes sense then. Oh, this is nothing. I thought they were going to show us like some screen caps of it. Anyways. All well, right. That was interesting. Cool device. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, on, I'm on board for less cables. I'll right now it's more. Oculus versus HTC in the battle of the giants in VR. Definitely. We'll see who wins out. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us for the Reality Check Podcast, episode 42. We are going ahead and we're going to sign out, and we will catch you all in the next one. Same time, same place next week really? for awards. Different time, same place. Never mind. End the podcast. Kill it. Kill it.